Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Pharmacy Fix 2 Lecture. Code is PT404. I am Professor Dr. Mona Abdani, and these are my office hours and where my office is. And this is my email. If you have any question, you can send me an email anytime and I will answer you soon. These are the reference textbooks and recommended ones of our course. Now we can start our lecture. Last lecture, we said that semi solid dosage forms are four main categories creams, ointments, gels, and pastes. This lecture, we will start studying creams. In creams, we will discuss four topics. First, definition of creams. What are creams? Types of creams. Then, formulation of creams. What's formulation? Formulation is how to design the dosage form. And finally, preparation of cream. How to compound this dosage form. First, definition of creams. Creams are semi-solid dosage forms intended for external use. Creams are characterized by being viscous emulsions. This is the main characteristics of creams. They are viscous emulsions. Because cream is a viscous emulsion, I should memorize you what was emulsion. Emulsion is a dispersed system of two immiscible liquids. The two liquids forming the emulsion should be immiscible with each other. So, we have one phase divided into small droplets, and this is called dispersed phase or internal phase and these small droplets are dispersed in the other liquid which is called, called dispersion phase or external phase. This is the compos composition of any emulsion, internal phase, or dispersed phase and external phase which is called dispersion phase. This is definition of creams. What about types of creams? As creams are emulsions, viscous emulsions, so types of creams are nothing but types of emulsions. As you know, the emulsions are either oil in water or water in oil emulsion. And these are the types of creams. In creams, we have we either have small droplets of oil dispersed in water, and this is water in oil emulsion, because this is small droplets of water dispersed in oil. And the other type of creams, small droplets of oil are dispersed in water phase. So this type of cream is oil in water. So types of creams are either water in oil or oil in water. What's the difference between the two types of cream? First, water in oil creams are called oily creams and oil in water ones are called aqueous creams. Oily creams are called so because the cream has its characteristics according to the external phase, the dispersion phase. In water in oil the external phase is oil so the cream is oily. 
in oil and water creams the external phase is water so the cream is aqueous cream and as we said the characteristics of the cream depends on the external phase so you find oily creams creamy translucent to white not transparent stiff and not washable cannot be washed with water uh, emulsifying agents used for preparation of water in oil creams are usually of natural origin on the other hand aqueous creams are thin white smooth and can be washed with water they are washable and the used emulsifying agents are most likely of synthetic origin these are the types of creams let's start to study formulation of a cream as i said before formulation means how to design a cream لو انت شغال في شركة وتدوك دراج وقال لك عايزين نحط الدراج ده في صورة كريم ازاي تعمل كريم مناسب للدراج ده to formulate a cream we have first to identify main components of the cream main components of the cream are oil phase aqueous phase emulsifier and additives so to formulate a good cream we have to choose first the type of emulsion would you prefer water in oil or oil in water cream second you have to know how to choose the oil phase can we say you have to know how to choose the aqueous phase of course not aqueous phase is water then you have to know how to choose the emulsifying agent and finally how to choose the additives first how to choose the type of emulsion water in oil or oil in water to choose the type of emulsion you have to consider the nature of the drug and the intended use of the cream first the nature of the drug if you have a lipophilic drug do you think the suitable type of emulsion is water in oil or oil in water and why sometimes you may think that the suitable uh, form of the lipophilic drug is oil in water cream but if you choose oil in water cream the drug will be soluble in the oil which is the internal phase can this drug be released do you remember in our first lecture when we said to be effective the drug incorporated in a semi-solid dosage form should first be released from the base if you put the lipophilic drug which is soluble in oil if you put this oil as the internal phase can the drug penetrate through water and it is a lipophilic drug to be released of course not if you have put the lipophilic drug in oil in water cream الدرج هيبقى دايب في الانترنال فيز والدرج لايبوفيليك ما بيدوبش في الميه ازاي بقى هيعمل بنتريشن ثرو ووتر ديفيوجن كده ثرو ووتر عشان يخرج ويبقى توبيكالي بايو افيلابل اوف كورس ذيس ويل نوت هابن سو ذا تايب اوف ايمولشن سوتبل فور لايبوفيليك دراجز از ووتر ان اويل ايمولشن يس ذا دراج شود بي سوليبل ان ذا اكسترنال فيز اوف ذا كريم not the internal phase and accordingly the type of emulsion suitable for hydrophilic drug hydrophilic drug will be soluble in water so water should be the external phase so the type of emulsion suitable for 
incorporation of hydrophilic drug is oil in water emulsion. طيب كده احنا بنقول that external phase the rule of external phase is solubilizer for the drug. The drug is soluble in the external phase. So, why do we add the internal phase? In lipophilic drugs, the drug will be soluble in oil. Why do I add water as an internal phase? Uh, if you use li solution of lipophilic drug in oil, this is solution for, and this for is liquid dosage form. And as we said before, liquid dosage forms have poor retention on the skin. So you have to increase the viscosity of the solution of the lipophilic drug in oil. How to increase its viscosity? Just disperse small droplets in water and form an emulsion. And the same thing applies to hydrophilic drug. The hydrophilic drug, we do fill my external phase. طبعا حتى الأويل في ال internal phase ده ليه؟ ما نستخدمه solution في المية وخلاص. لا كده انت حطيته as a solution يبقى هو مش هيبقى retained على ال skin لفترة مناسبة. لازم تزود ال viscosity بتاعته وتحوله إلى semi solid إلى viscous emulsion بإنك تحط Small droplets of oil to be an internal phase. So, the nature of drug affects the choice of the type of emulsion. If the drug is lipophilic, it should be incorporated in water in oil emulsion. If it is hydrophilic, it should be incorporated in oil in water emulsion. The second factor that affects the choice of type of emulsion is the intended use of the cream. Simply because if the drug is hydrophilic and you, and you need to uh, prepare water and oil cream for any reason, simply you can chemically modify the drug to increase its lipophilicity and incorporate it in water and oil. So the intended use of the cream is an important factor affecting choice of the type of the intended use of the cream if you want to use this cream as emollients. What do you think? Do you think we use water in oil emulsion or oil in water emulsion? You think that emollient effect needs oils to lie themselves beneath the layers of the stratum corneum, as we said before, and exert the emollient effect. We said the emollient is oil. It is trusted between the layers of the stratum corneum. So you think that water in oil is suitable for uh, emollient effect. But also, oil in water creams have sufficient oil content to exert emollient effect. So for emollient effect, both water in oil and oil in water type of creams are equal. Therefore, emollient effect, what? Pleasant effect. Pleasant effect means when water evaporates, when the water incorporated in the cream evaporates, gives cooling effect. So what type of emulsion is suitable for pleasant effect? Water in oil or oil in water? Some people, some students may think that oil in water is more suitable for pleasant effect. It has large amount of water. And some say, no, water in oil, because when the internal water evaporates, it gives the pleasant effect. In fact, they are also equal in pleasant effect. You, If you want a cream of pleasant effect, it doesn't matter to use water in oil or oil in water. The affecting factor 
uh, in choosing the type of emulsion is the nature of the drug, not the intended use of the cream. Now, what, what uses of the cream are dependent on the external oil phase? So what uses uh, of creams are preferred for water and oil creams? If you want cleansing effect, occlusive effect, or protectant effect, all these effects are related to the oil phase. So you, you need a cream with external phase is oil. So water in oil cream is more preferred than oil in water one if you need cleansing effect, occlusive effect, or protectant effect. Occlusive and protectant effects of oils are due to their retention on the surface of the skin. If you are on the surface of the skin, then they will skin. There is nothing to be able to the skin. They will be able to use the Occlusive, and protectant, and the skin. Cleansing effect, that means uh, because many of debris, bakaya al khalaya, dead cells and dirts are soluble in oil, so oils are used for cleansing effect. Finally, water in oil cream is more preferred when we, use, when we need cleansing, occlusive, or protectant effect. On the other hand, Somebody may think, if water in oil cream is so useful, why don't we use it always in preparation in creams? oil in water. Water in oil creams have their disadvantages or limitations as well. They are not washable with water, as we said before. And this is inconvenient for patients. So when you put something on the skin, you have to wash it with water. You have to wash it with water. They are because they are oily and uh, sticky and stiff, as we said before. They are not suitable for hairy parts. Water in oil creams are not suitable for hairy parts. They cannot be used, for example. Uh, for the scalp, the scalp layer for water loss, and they are also not suitable for oozing wounds. What are oozing wounds? Wounds, yani garra. Sometimes wounds are oozing. They produce some liquids or pus. This pus is full of bacteria, aerobic bacteria. Aerobic bacteria are not dangerous, but if you put a water in oil cream on an oozing wound, the occlusive effect of the cream due to the presence of oil in the external phase will make the environment anaerobic. So anaerobic bacteria will flourish and anaerobic bacteria are very dangerous. So never ever use water in oil cream or any occlusive dosage form on an oozing wound. كلام واضح لما يبقى في جرح بيطلع مادة المادة دي فيها aerobic و anaerobic bacteria بس ال anaerobic bacteria مش قادرة تزدهر علشان ال environment بتاعتي aerobic هو متعرض لل air. ال aerobic bacteria مش ضارة لكن لو انت حطيت water in oil cream on this wound او عملت له occlusion by any way the anaerobic bacteria will flourish هتزدهر بقى ما هي environment مناسبة ليها و anaerobic bacteria is very harmful this is the disadvantage of water in oil creams or the limitation of, it, of their use there are some use of creams depend on 
the presence of water in the external phase. If you want the cream to give to be washable, to enhance penetration of the drug and enhance absorption, so put water in the external phase. Of course, oil and water creams are washable, as we said before. Uh, water enhances penetration and absorption because it uh, affects the skin, it hydrates the skin and makes drug penetration through the skin more easily, as will be mentioned later on. So, now we know how to choose the type of cream. Let's discuss how to choose the oil First, we have to establish a, a very important uh, terms. There are scientific differences between oleaginous substance, lipids, fats, wax, oils. Scientifically, they are not the same. In scientific textbooks, oleaginous substance is a substance which has the same nature as lipids, but chemically they are not lipids, but they have the same nature. We may find the oleaginous substance soluble in water, but it resembles li lipid, the azyl lipid, which shares lip the characters of lipid in being of suitable melting point. It can melt at suitable temperature, and it congeals at room temperature. بقدر اسيحها واحضر منها كريم واسيبها تكونجيل ويبقى عندي كريم. These are oleaginous substances. Lipids in scientific textbooks are substances or fatty substances naturally occurring in the body. Not synthetic, natural fats are called lipids scientifically. Lipids are divided into fats, wax, and oils. The difference between them, fats and wax, fat and wax are solids or semi-solids, while oils are liquid. The difference between fat and wax is in the melting point, and the chemical structure, of course. Fat and wax or are of high melting point because uh, and wax fats have high melting point and wax are of low melting point. The high melting point of fats is due to their composition. They are triglycerides. In glycerin, the three OH groups are substituted with fatty acids and for this reason, their melting point is relatively high. While waxes are primary esters, only one OH group uh, is uh, displaced with acid, uh, and uh, for this reason, they are primary esters and they have lower melting point than fats. So, scientifically, in scientific textbooks, there is a difference between oleaginous substance, lipid, fat, wax, oil. But actually, in our lectures, I may, I may use any term of these terms to express fats, oils, the fatty layer or the fatty phase of the cream. I may use the term oleaginous phase, lipid phase, fat phase, wax, or oil. Choice of the oil phase. The oil phase may be composed of only one oily substance or more than one, or a mixture, or a blend of substances. What is the importance of choosing the oily phase? It's an oil, any oil can produce a cream. No, it's important to use, to choose the proper 
oily face for your cream. What is the suitable oil face for your cream? Oil face is used as a carrier, so it affects drug solubility. If, if you will prepare water in oil cream, you should choose an oil which dissolves the drug. And if you prepare oil in water cream, then use an oil which does not dissolve the drug. The second, the oil phase may affect drug penetration through the skin, as will be mentioned in transdermal drug delivery part. Third, the oil phase may affect the cream viscosity, and it's very important. As you see before, the oils or the oily phase may be composed of solid substance, semi-solid substance, or liquid substance. These substances are of different viscosity. And when I mix them together, the proportion of fats will affect the viscosity of the cream. The proportion of oils, if high proportion of oils, of liquid fats, the oils which are liquid, the viscosity will be small. But when I have the cream of high proportion of solid fats, the viscosity will be high viscosity. Now, what is the suitable viscosity of a cream? Adjust the viscosity of the cream so that it is viscous enough to be retained on the skin, but with suitable viscosity to be spread on the skin. Maybe ashhagara, just retained and not spreadable. No, this is not a suitable uh, oily phase. Choose an oily phase that is that can that is with uh, suitable viscosity, so it is retained on the skin but it is easily spread. But to put into consideration that some oils may add to the effect of the cream. You all like, مثلا, if you want to prepare an antiseptic cream, there is an oil called benzyl benzoate, and this oil is with an antiseptic. Properties. So, it is preferred to put it in your cream, to use it or to incorporate it in the oil phase of this cream to add to the effect of the antiseptic drug. Another example, if you want to prepare an anti-rheumatic pain, an anti-rheumatic cream used for joint pains, pain. I want to ice the hadar. Anti-rheumatic cream and that anti-rheumatic drug, and you want to design a cream for this drug. There is an oil called turpentine oil, and turpentine oil is known for its anti-rheumatic activity. So it is preferred to use turpentine oil as a component of your oil phase of the oil phase of your cream. Why? to add to the anti-rheumatic activity of the main drug. This is the disadvantage of water in oil creams or the limitation of, it, of their use. There are some use of creams depend on the presence of water in the external phase. If you want the This slide is an extra slide. It's a reminder of emulsifying agents or surfactants you have studied in physical pharmacy. In physical pharmacy, you have studied that if you put water and oil 
in a beaker and try to mix them, they will never mix. So you have to add a special substance that is called surfactant. This surfactant is of unique chemical structure. Surfactants have hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. The proportion between the hydrophilic part and the lipophilic part of the surfactant molecule is called HLB. Hydrophilic, it's H. Lipophilic, it's L. Balanced, it's B. HLB. If you add this surfactant to the beaker, the surfactant will orient itself will distribute its molecules so that the hydrophilic part is pointed to aqueous phase, the lipophilic part is pointed to oil phase, and this facilitates, it makes easy that one of the two phases is divided into small droplets dispersed in the other phase. This means emulsion formation. In our example, it's oil in water emulsion. The surfactant makes the oil to be divided into droplets dispersed in water. The type of emulsion is definitely according to the type of the surfactant you use. Okay. So, so surfactants are called emulsified because they cause emulsification of two immiscible liquids. طيب افتكرنا حتى السنة اللي فاتت تعالوا نقول بقى to choose the emulsifying agent keep in mind that you may need to use one or more emulsifier in your cream. What's the suitable emulsifier for my cream? I have many different emulsifying agents. How to choose the suitable emulsifier? Suitable emulsifier is chosen according to its L, HLB value and the HLB value required by the oleaginous phase to form emulsion. If a fee, two HLB values should be considered. The HLB value of the emulsifier. Uh, what HLB value can it provide me? هيديني HLB قد إيه؟ طب أنا محتاجة بقى HLB قد إيه؟ The required HLB value for the oil phase in our cream. This oil components required HLB value at the E to be emulsified. So factors affecting the choice of emulsifying agent, the type of cream, and as we said before, to prepare water in oil cream, the emulsifier should be of HLB value ranging from 3 to 6. And to prepare oil in water cream, use emulsifier with HLB value ranging from 8 to 18. This is the, ver the first factor affecting choice of emulsifying agent, which is the type of the cream. I used Hadder, um, any type of the cream. The second is the required HLB value of the used oils. For each oil, there is two HLB values recorded in textbooks. Deftahke, the textbook on Liquid paraffin, for example, you will find two required HLB values for each oil. One is HLB value required for water in oil emulsion formation, and the second is the required HLB value for the same fat or the same oil to form oil in water emulsion formation. So the same oil requires certain HLB value to form water in oil emulsion and a different HLB value to form 
oil in water in March. So, Bardo, how to choose the suitable emulsifier? There are three main steps. First, define the cream type. See what direction will be go to. Will we go to water in oil emulsion direction or oil in water emulsion direction? The first thing is define the cream type. Then, calculate the required HLB value for the oil phase of the cream. How can I know it? Taban from textbooks. The third step, you can then choose an emulsifier with suitable HLB value, which should be equal to the required HLB value. If from many emulsifiers, you can choose one or mixture of emulsifiers so that they give the HLB value which is required by the oil phase. Then on top of that, in an example. But before we take an example, I have to teach you some simple mathematical methods for calculation of required HLB, either required HLB of an oil blend or HLB of a, an emulsifier blend. If you have one oil, it's very easy to know HLB, the required HLB value. Just open the book and see the required HLB for your cream type. But what if you have more than one oil in your oil phase? If we have two oils or two lipids, A and B, and we open the book and know that the required HLB value of each one is Kaza, first amount of uh, lipid A is A and amount of lipid B is B. The required HLB value for A and B are HLB A and HLB B. So this is the amount and required HLB value for each lipid. How can I calculate the required HLB value of a lipid mixture containing one A? A gram of lipid A and B gram of the second lipid. Is they asaba? I think you previously studied it in physical pharmacy. Simply, HLB required by the blend equals HLB of the first lipid times each its proportion in the lipid mixture. This means its weight divided by total weight of lipids. And take care, I consider total weight of lipids, not total weight of the cream. Total weight of the lipid part of the cream or the oil phase of the cream. This will be added to the HLB of the second oil multiplied by its proportion. This means its amount divided by the total amount of oils in the cream. This is how to calculate the required HLB for an oil blend. How to calculate the HLB of an emulsifier's blend? If you have two emulsifiers, the amount of emulsifier, the first emulsifier is M and the amount of second emulsifier is N. And you know that the HLB value of first emulsifier is HLBM and that of the second emulsifier is HLBN. You can calculate the HLB value of an emulsifier mixture containing M gram of the first emulsifier and N gram of the second one. How? HLB value of the blend will be equal to for first emulsifier, HLB times its amount divided by total amount of emulsifier. And this will be added to 
the HLB of second emulsifier multiplied by its amount divided by total amount of emulsifiers. So now we can calculate the required HLB value of an oil blend and the HLB value of an emulsifier blend. Now we need to choose an emulsifying agent in a prescription. Let's take an example. For this prescription, This prescription contains liquid paraffin 5%, beeswax 15%, emulsifier 5%, and water to 100%. And instructions are prepare oil and water cream. What's needed in this prescription? Use suitable emulsifier or emulsifier blend and define the amount of each emulsifier if you use an emulsifier blend. طب how to do it؟ هنعمل ازاي بقى الموضوع ده؟ جبنا بقى كوباية الشاي وقعدنا نفكر اهو. هل... First step احنا قلنا first step do what? Define you the, the type of emulsifier of emulsion. Define the type of cream oil in water ولا water in oil. Here in this prescription the instruction says that it is oil in water cream. So the first step, I define the type of cream so that it is oil in water cream. Step, calculate the required HLB for the oil phase. Where is the oil phase? The oil phase are liquid paraffin and beeswax. So open the textbook and get the required HLB for liquid paraffin and beeswax. When you open the textbook, you will find two values of required HLB for each lipid or oil, as we said before. Which value would you, would you use? Which value would you use? The value for preparing oil in water, uh, oil, water in oil cream, or that used for oil in water cream. Our cream is oil in water, and for this reason, we said that the first step is to define the type of cream. No, I will prepare an oil in water cream, so I will use these required HLB values. I will consider the required HLB value of liquid paraffin is 12 and that of beeswax is 12. As stated in the textbook, then, then I can calculate the required HLB value. Mm, this is mathematical part in 100 gram prescription, the total weight of our prescription is 100 gram. 100 gram prescription contains how many liquid paraffin? 5 grams. How many beeswax? 15 grams. How many total weight of lipids? 5 plus 15 equal 20 gram. The total weight of lipids is used not, and I repeat, not the total weight of prescription. I calculate the required HLB value according to the total weight of lipid, 20 grams, 5 grams for liquid paraffin, and 15 grams for beeswax. Type. This is the total weight of lipid. Let's calculate the required HLB value with, required with this lipid blend. Required HLB value will be the sum of the required HLB value by liquid paraffin, which is 12. The HLB value, the required HLB value by liquid, by liquid paraffin times 5 divided by 
25 is the weight of liquid paraffin and 20 is the total weight of lipids. Also, for the beeswax, its required HLB value is 12. So, its proportion in the required HLB value of the total mixture is 12 times 15, which is the weight of beeswax in the prescription, divided by 20, which is the total weight of lipids in the prescription. So, the total required HLB value is 3 plus 9 equal 12. Total required HLB value equals 12 times 5 over 20 plus 12 times 15 over 20, and this equals 12. This is the total required HLB va value of our oil phase. We can choose a surfactant with HLB value equal to the required HLB value. From the many different surfactants available, I can choose the surfactant which LEB HLB value equals 12, which is the required HLB value. But in this example, the available surfactants are only three, acacia, polysorbate 80, and sodium oleate. I can know the HLB value of each surfactant from textbook. Textbooks say that HLB value of acacia is 8, that of polysorbate 80 is 15, and that of sodium oleate is 18. And the required HLB value I need is 12, as calculated before. So which surfactant is suitable? Mm -hmm. There is no single surfactant that provide me with the required HLB value. Required HLB value 12. Ma fish surfactant men dool il HLB value btatu 12. So what to do? Use a surfactant blend. You can design a surfactant blend of HLB value of 12. You can mix Acacia with polysorbate 80. You can mix acacia with sodium oleate. These two uh, emulsifier blends will, may give you the uh, required HLB, which is 12. But never, never use the surfactant blend of polysorbate 80 and sodium oleate. Why? The HLB value of polysorbate 80 is 15, and that of sodium oleate is 18. Both are larger than 12, which is the required HLB value. So, you'll never reach the HLB value of 12 from uh, emulsifiers have HLB value of 15 and 18, which both are more than 12. But in case of acacia and polysorbate 80, HLB value of acacia is less than the required HLB value, which is 12. And HLB value of polysorbate 80 is 15, which is higher than the required HLB value. So I can control the ratio between the two emulsifiers acacia and polysorbate 80 to reach the required HLB value, which is 12. The same thing applies to the mixture of acacia and sodium oleate, but not for the mixture of polysorbate 80 and sodium oleate. To complete the, uh, our example, we will use a blend of acacia and polysorbate 80. Acacia HLB beta 8 and polysorbate 80 as HLB of 50. Using a blend of acacia and polysorbate 80, I have to specify the weight of each emulsifier. From the prescription, I know that the total weight of emulsifier blend should be 5 grams. 
So what weight of each emulsifier will give me HLB of 12, which is the required HLB? Calculate the required amount of each emulsifier. We have acacia and polysorbate 80. Total uh, is 5 gram. So from the textbook, I know that HLB of acacia is 8 and that of polysorbate 80 is 15. If I assume that the weight of acacia in this mixture is A, so produced HLB by the mixture will be equal to 8, which is the L HLB of acacia, times A, which is its weight, divided by 5, which is the total weight of the uh, uh, emulsifier blend. This will be added to the HLB of polysorbate 80, which is 15 times the weight of the polysorbate 80 is 5 minus weight of acacia, which is A. So 5 minus A divided by total weight of the prescription, which is or total weight of the emulsifier in the prescription, which is 5. Mathematically, total HLB equals 8 times A divided by 5 plus 15. 15 is the HLB of polysorbate 80 times 5 minus A, which is the weight of polysorbate 80 divided by 5, which is the total weight of emulsifier blend. So you will find that A equals 2.14. This is the weight of acacia. And polysorbate 80 is 5 minus 2.14 equals 2.86 gram. So the emulsifier blend we should use for the cream in this example is formed of acacia and polysorbate 80. Acacia is 2.14 gram and polysorbate 80 is 2.86 gram. And here we finished our example. Type. As an exercise, please, for the previous prescription, for the same prescription, calculate the amount of each emulsifier, but not in a blend of acacia and polysorbate 80 as we did in a blend of acacia and sodium olivate. This is an exercise. Please try yourself and uh, we will discuss this in the next lecture, inshallah. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define creams, differentiate between cream types, design a cream, predict suitable emulsifier for a cream relation. We will complete our discussion on creams next, next lecture, inshallah. Thank you.